Simon Token was born in England in 1959, grew up in a small village near Oxford. After studying modern history at Trinity College, Oxford, Simon went on to become a successful barrister, specializing in criminal justice. He and his family now live in Southern California, and his grandfather, by the way, you may have heard of, J.R.R. Tolkien, the author of The Lord of the Rings. Simon, thank you so much for joining us on Autograph Peru today. Well, thank you for having me on. It's wonderful. Now, let me ask you about something that Booklist Magazine says. You mm. probably have seen this. You've probably been confronted with this. The review. <laughs> Booklist Magazine, which, by the way, is an excellent review from Booklist, but they said, quote, the promotional material for Tolkien's second novel shamelessly plays up the fact that the author is the grandson of J.R.R. Tolkien. Mm. But they say, enough of this literary pedigree nonsense. As Tolkien shows in both his mysteries, he does not need to have his DNA trumpeted. He is a first-rate writer in his own right. What's your reaction to hearing something like that? Oh, it's nice. I mean, it's really nice. <laughs> because I guess I came to be a writer because when the Jackson movies came out in about 10 years ago, it was like a, a roller coaster coming straight at me. And I felt that I wanted to be something in my own right. And so I've tried to be that. And so with Booklist magazine, which is a, it's a good magazine, mm -hmm. yeah, oh, yes. feels that I've done that, then I, I, I'm happy with it because that's what I've tried to be. I didn't just want to be J.R.R. Tolkien's grandson. And I think, ironically, actually having created something myself, you know, not once but twice now, I feel, I feel much more at ease with my grandfather than perhaps I was because he was... Um, he wasn't just a writer of The Lord of the Rings, but I mean, he spoke countless languages, and he was this huge figure, and we, I, I grew up in the, very much in the shadow of J.R.R. Tolkien in the sense that he was um, just this a quite amazing person, this genius, you know, author of the century and all that. So what were we, you know, <laughs> creeping around in his shadow? Would I be correct in guessing that you must have heard many times when you were growing up Oh, Simon, do you want to be a writer, too? I'm not sure. I can't, can't quite remember that. But um, I was mysteriously convinced until the age of 41, 40, I guess, that I couldn't write. And I think I'm probably unusual among quite a lot of people because um, I never read a word of fiction until I was 40. I didn't write a short story or anything at all. So I think that's unusual. And that may have a great deal to do with the fact of being J.R.R. Tolkien's grandson. Yeah, you were a voracious reader. I read a great deal because there wasn't much else to do. I mean, we lived in a, I, I was the only child of uh, my father and my mother who got divorced when I was five. And I lived in a very small village outside of Oxford. And um, whilst it was the end of the 60s, which is kind of like an exciting period, and there's like Lennon and uh, McCartney out there. They were a long way away, and all I had was uh, three t television channels, <laughs> all of which uh, came to an end at 11 o'clock at night with God Save the Queen. So I was kind of thrown on my own resources, and I, I read a great deal. And I think that what I read then, because it, I was a kid and it went straight through onto my imagination, is quite a lot of the fuel for what I'm writing now. Um, I think particularly 19th century novels. Now, Simon, let me get back. Scott from Pittsburgh wants to know, is it true that you had influence on the decision to produce the movie Lord of the Rings? Um, hi, Scott. Um, actually, I had absolutely no influence whatsoever on the decision to produce the Lord of the Rings. Um, there was, I felt that the movie, that the idea of a movie of the Lord of the Rings um, could work. I was interested in the idea of it, and I think Others took the view that it, it wouldn't work, which is an equally valid point of view, given that it is such a work of the imagination. But the um, New Line Cinema, who owned the rights to The Lord of the Rings, uh, made the movie, and it had absolutely nothing to do with me whatsoever. <laughs> do people wonder why you don't write the same kind of books as your grandfather? Um, you mean like Stephen King's son, right? Right, right, mm -hmm, yeah. right, right it's more horror. In other, in other words, do they expect um, you to pick up Lord of the Rings and then to pick up your new book and for them to be in a similar genre? Well, I suppose they might, might expect that, you know, that people, people follow in, the, in, in, in their footsteps. But I think as we were trying to dis discuss earlier, uh, we were discussing earlier, Bill, that 
I wanted to be my own person. Mm -hmm. And you know, this ties in with the movies as well. And the idea of writing fantasy wouldn't have worked for one minute because I would have purely have been trying to imitate my grandfather <laughs> and would have had complete contempt for myself and wouldn't be sitting here today anyway. <laughs> I think it is a challenge, but for some reason, somewhere inside my head um, or wherever, I have, I have all these evil people dwelling inside of me, like a sort of, I don't know, like in, I don't know, it's very strange. And they come naturally to me. Now, Rick from Denver asks, apropos enough, are you basically an evil person? An evil person then? Um, <laughs> no, Rick, I think I'm not an evil person. In fact, I feel very confident that I'm not an evil person at all. Um, I think creating evil characters is interesting, although if you just created them as purely evil, they wouldn't be credible. There's got to be s different sides to their character to make them understandable, but I, I actually don't think I'm, I'm really evil at all. So, you know, I think I'm, I'm a nice person. So I, I don't think the two follow. Creativity and being able to create something is a wonderful thing, mm -hmm. and I think it's what my grandfather thought. My grandfather thought that that was as, as close as you got to God as a, as a person as you could when you were creating things. And I, I kind of feel that. What is, what is your fondest memory of him? Or, your, or the fondest image you have when you think of him? Just he was actually really interested in me as a person, which is kind of unusual when I was, you know, I, he died when I was 14. And he would actually talk to me about what my experiences were like. You know, my parents were divorced when I was five, and we would walk along the beach at Bournemouth, and he was very understanding. I would go and stay with my grandparents on my own quite, quite often. People aged nine or 10 took train journeys on their own in those days, and um, that was good. And then a lot of other sort of different memories. I mean, we played word games, and I asked him endless questions about the Lord of the Rings, um, which I think were very difficult, because one of the reasons why the Lord of the Rings is so amazing is that you actually believe that it's what he's actually written is only a section of what he could have written. That all these other events that he hints at, which basically have already been written down, and it gives, but I'm not telling you about them. Of course, he hadn't written them down. So it was a kid of 10 or 11. I, I wanted to know about them. And that was, that was a lot of pressure on him, I think. You know, he had, he had to tell me. <laughs> What were the wizards doing in the East who had just been left as sort of a sense of depth, you know? <laughs> do, you, uh, do you have any answers to questions that you can reveal to us here today? About what? About anything that, that Lord of the Rings fans may have that one of those unanswered questions, is, is there anything that he revealed to you that is not in one of the books? That, no. No? <laughs> no, nothing that I can think of. Nothing that I think. Except that I, I think the big unanswered secret is that he had spent 40 years of his life writing a book that wasn't published. And I think by the end of his life, that made him exceedingly sad. And it was published, which is what my father did, which I think would have made him very happy. But as with many posthumous things, he wasn't there to see it. And that is sad. What do you think he would think of your writing career? Oh, I, I, for the reasons I've, I've described, I think he'd be delighted. Mm -hmm. I, I, I think one of the things that he thought The Lord of the Rings was, was a really good read. One of the things he couldn't stand about Narnia is its allegory. The point of a read is a read. You know, the book, the story is what is important. The story is true, not that it's representing something else. So if I can, if I can write stories, that's a good thing. I think he'd be very pleased. Mm -hmm. Well, you write very good stories. Thank you, Bill. by the sales of uh, both your books, and we look forward to the third one as well. I would like to thank Simon Tolkien for joining us today. Thank you so much for being with us on Autograph Aru. Well, thank you so much for having me. It's and we great. hope you'll join thank us you. again next time. Thank you. Thank you very much.